Seasonic, the heart of your system. Hello, Brandy here from KitGuru, and in this video, I'm going to be taking a look at the Republic of Gamers Zephyrus GX502 gaming laptop. Uh, so, this laptop that I've got beside me here, the uh, components that it has inside, it's got an i7-9750H processor, which is the new version of the very popular i7-8750H, which has six cores and 12 threads. The only difference with the new 9th gen version is that it has a slightly higher base clock speed and it can also technically boost slightly higher as well. With this laptop you also get an RTX 2070, there is also an RTX 2060 version available. Uh, my review sample has 13 gigabyte, 32 gigabytes sorry, of 2666 megahertz memory. Uh, 16 gigabytes of that is on board and the other 16 gigabytes is a stick so it is dual dual channel memory. It also has a 512 gigabyte M.2 SSD as well and that is the Intel 660p drive. With the laptop uh, that I'm reviewing, I can't actually find that exact specification online anywhere to buy. I think I've maybe been sent a kind of special review sample. The closest specification that I can find that's available to buy in the UK, uh, there is a 240 hertz version of the display. Mine has the 144 hertz display and it also has a one terabyte SSD. So the retail price of that one is 2,500 pounds, but that's obviously a slightly better spec than what I've got. So probably looking between 2000 and 2500 pounds this laptop depending on which kind of specification that you're going to go for so it is obviously a very expensive laptop it is quite a high-end gaming laptop and therefore kind of the overall build quality and aesthetics do reflect that so when it comes to the overall build quality of this laptop, I must say I was pretty impressed. Asus always seem to do pretty well when it comes to kind of getting the balance right. They use like some really good materials. Uh, they also use like quite a high end machining process and things. So they always tend to create a pretty good high end laptop. I mean, you do pay for it, uh, but I think in a way you do definitely get what you pay for. So this laptop was no exception. The whole body feels very solid and sturdy. It is a thin laptop. So it's definitely portable it's also lightweight so it's 90 millimeters thin it's also weighs in at just under two kilograms as well so it's quite a bit lighter i think i reviewed a razor blade they weigh quite a bit more they are made of like a similar material with the aluminium and stuff uh, but Asus, because of the kind of process that they use, they managed to get the weight down, uh, but also maintained the kind of structural rigidity as well. There's no real flex to this laptop at all. The, gl uh, the lid like opens and closes very smoothly. It really glides. Um, there's no kind of like horrible kind of cheap plasticky bits. This laptop in general does feel very well made and very well created. It's got like a brushed aluminium finish. It's got, it's like an aluminium magnesium alloy. I think it's made out of mostly. The underside of the laptop is plastic. So you don't get kind of the MacBook experience where you've got the aluminium all over. The underside is made of like a scratchy plastic, but I don't think it is too bad. And of course that does sort of help to keep the weight down. And in general, I am impressed with the overall build quality. This kind of leads into the aesthetics as well because it is such a well-made laptop. It also looks really good. I love the design. It is mostly a black chassis. The lid kind of has like that brushed aluminium finish, which I think is really attractive. It's got kind of like the stripe across the back and also the ROG logo as well. It lights up kind of like a subtle red. So even though you can tell it's a gaming laptop, I don't think it's too overdone. It's not too over the top. I think a lot of companies have kind of moved away from the crazy kind of alien wear you know with like all the lights and the fins and stuff like that i think they're starting to realize people prefer like a slightly more subtle design and that la this laptop does obviously fit in with that it of course does have an rgb keyboard though i think gaming laptop like it's one of the tick boxes because i think even if you don't like rgb you can just still set it to what like a plain color and it'll look fine but it is there for the people that want it and you do have a good amount of customization as well so you've got per key rgb and it does shine out through at a nice brightness. The only thing I don't really like that Asus have done with this laptop, I'm not sure if they've done it for aesthetics to kind of prevent fingerprints, but they've put kind of like a strange matte rubbery coating around the keyboard area. And I really do not like how that feels. Um, and some people might like it, uh, but it's something I've not experienced before and I particularly am not a fan. I do definitely prefer kind of more of the standard aluminium finish. When 
when it comes to the connectivity options you get with this laptop, it does have a decent amount of connectivity. It's not quite as extensive as some, uh, but I think it should do for most people. On the left hand side here, you've got the charger port, which I like because that is going to be out of the way of if you're using a mouse. I definitely prefer having the charger port on the back or on the left, just so you're not kind of getting tangled up in the cable. You've also got an ethernet port. There is a HDMI port and USB ports have had another name change. So they are now USB 3.2 ports, but they're essentially the same so to make things less complicated I'm just going to read off what speed they are instead so on this side you have the faster USB 3 um, you have the faster USB A port and it is the 10 gigabytes per second speed and you've also got a dedicated jack for microphone and jack for a headphone as well on the right hand side uh, you will find it has a Kensington lock, so that's going to come in handy if you're going to take this uh, laptop to a public space and you don't want anyone to run off with it. You've also got uh, two of the slightly slower uh, USB-A ports, so the five gigabytes per second uh, USB-A ports. And you also have a USB-C port as well, which is really nice to see. And this one is also a display port, 1.4 display port, and it also has the power delivery as well. So I think you can actually charge this laptop if you use it in more of like the power saving mode using that port and you can also charge other devices from it as well so that is a really nice feature i think the only thing this laptop really lacks in the way of connectivity is maybe a memory card reader uh, if you're someone that wants to use this as kind of like a pho photography and video editing laptop and things um but apart from that the overall connectivity i think is pretty good and it is of course nice to see that uh, it has an ethernet port Atus hasn't sacrificed uh, thinness for having something as practical as an ethernet port when it comes to the display on this laptop, I must say it is probably one of the best that I've seen. It pretty much has everything you could ever want. Uh, so the display itself is a pretty standard 1080p resolution, but on a 15 inch laptop, like you don't really need more than that. Something like 4K is probably completely pointless because 1080p looks perfectly fine at this smaller size. Uh, it also has 144 hertz refresh rate with a three millisecond response time. So that is super smooth. Uh, you get really really nice kind of like smooth gameplay there's no kind of like jumpy like if you find s like 60 fps is still not smooth enough for you you've got 144 there's also a 240 hertz version as well if 144 doesn't quite cut it uh, the display also is IPS levels. So that basically means you've got like slightly better viewing angles and better contrast and things better brightness um also you have a uh, Pantone validated display, uh, so that should provide better color accuracy and it does look really, really good. It also has 100% sRGB uh, capability as well. And just to top it all off, it has a, a G-Sync display as well. So if you turn off the NVIDIA Optimus, which comes with this laptop, which is quite a kind of clever power saving trick. If you disable that, you've then got a G-Sync display. So that teams up with the RTX 2070 and you basically get, basically get kind of like stutter free, uh, completely tear free, uh, very nice gameplay. So all that kind of teamed up together makes this an extremely good display that pretty much ticks every box for me. The keyboard on this laptop does lack a numpad, but in general, I do think it is a decent keyboard because every, all the keys and things are well spaced, which I do definitely like. Uh, also, this keyboard is actually a US layout, so it was slightly different to me, but I actually found it pretty easy to get used to. Uh, normally, if I find myself making a lot of mistakes, it shows that it's probably not a very good keyboard, but I had no problems with this keyboard. It was actually pretty good to type on as well, even though the travel distance isn't great because it is a thin laptop, it wasn't actually the worst. It wasn't the best, wasn't the worst either. So it was actually about average, uh, but I didn't really have a problem with that at all. It also has full N key rollover as well, which for gaming is kind of like a must have because it means that every key press is gonna register as it should do. Uh, also, I quite like the fact that the space bar is larger as well, because I find like when you're in the heat of battle, it does make it slightly easier for your thumb to kind of hit it. When it comes to the look of the keyboard, the font is definitely more on the gamery side. Uh, so it is kind of that typical ROG font. I know some people don't particularly like it, but I do like it because it's, it's easy to read and it does match the overall kind of design of the laptop. The RGB lighting is nice and bright. It comes through 
at a kind of decent brightness. You can see it even in uh, kind of like full bright lighting of my camera and things. And also it has plenty of effects to choose between as well. So you've got several different kind of preset profiles that you can scroll between using a shortcut on the keyboard itself. And you can also kind of control every key individually as well and set up your own profiles and things. Uh, when it comes to shortcuts, so you do have ones to change the keyboard brightness, change the effect, you can uh, change the screen brightness, you can kind of have all the volume controls and that, it's all using the function key, but you also do have some dedicated shortcuts as well to change the volume, also mute and unmute the microphone and also open the Republic of Gamers Armory crate. I do like those, as those are probably the ones you're going to use the most often, just like adjusting volume and things, it's quite awkward to kind of have to do that in game. Uh, so to have dedicated keys I think is quite a nice feature. The trackpad on this laptop is also pretty good to use. It's a nice size, it's situated where you'd expect to find it, and it has a nice kind of smooth surface as well, and all the Windows gestures and things work as you would expect it to. In general, I didn't have any problems with the trackpad. Uh, even though it's a gaming laptop and you're probably using it with a mouse most of the time, it is nice to know that the trackpad's not gonna give you any problems. The only issue that I kind of had was that the clicks are integrated. I'm not a huge fan of that, um, and also with this laptop, I seem to have more of a problem than I do with usual. I find myself like accidentally left clicking when I want to right click for some reason. Um, it's probably just the fact that maybe I have to get used to it, uh, but I did find it slightly annoying, but the clicks themselves are definitely satisfying. Uh, and I think most people probably won't have the track problem with the trackpad at all. The speakers on the GX502 actually have a whole load of tech behind them that Asus go through on their website. Uh, however, for me, in general, I did find them to be pretty average. Uh, however, when it comes to kind of thin gaming laptops, these speakers are probably some of the best I've heard because normally you can't use them at all. Uh, whereas these, they do actually come through at a really good volume. They do go really loud. They're also pretty punchy and have a good amount of bass behind them as well. Uh, so they are definitely usable, uh, but don't expect like amazing speakers you're still going to get a better sound from actually having dedicated speakers on your desk uh, but for a thin gaming laptop I was reasonably impressed but they're still average um also one thing i'm not sure if it was because i've got a review sample but i thought it would mention it because it did really annoy me is that you kind of get a bit of vibration from the speakers like through the chassis i'm not sure whether it's the way the chassis is made but particularly at lower volumes you can really hear it and i did find it to be quite irritating i'm not sure if it's because there's like too much bass and it's creating too much vibration or something uh but i did definitely get that and it did really annoy me at the lower volumes. Typically, this is where I would go on to try out and discuss the webcam on a laptop, but this laptop doesn't actually come with one. Uh, as you can tell, it does have the really nice thin bezels, which obviously make the display very attractive, but it's not very good for placing a webcam. Uh, Asus did do the thing for a little while where they were putting them at the bottom of the screen, which is just kind of stupid because they're not particularly usable but I mean the laptop does still have one it seems with this laptop they have completely given up they just got rid of the webcam completely and they're kind of like if you want one you'll buy one separately and um, for most people that probably won't be a problem because unless you're someone that's going to be using it professionally then you're probably not going to use a webcam very much um, but I mean it is definitely something worth mentioning because if you're someone that has to make a lot of Skype calls for work or something an easy uh, to use webcam that is, I mean, even if it is kind of a nostril view, at least it's still a webcam. Uh, it's something that this laptop doesn't have. So for some people that might completely take it out of the running, uh, for others you might not care about it. I'm now gonna take a look at the Asus ROG Armory Crate software. So this does come pre-installed on this laptop. Uh, Asus is one of the companies that is a little bit guilty of downloading a load of kind of extra programs and things. So when you get it, you don't get a particularly fresh laptop. Uh, but the Armory Crate software is definitely one that's worth having because it pretty much controls everything to do with the different profiles and settings and things when it comes to cooling and performance. So it's definitely one that you need. So don't go uninstalling it when you get the laptop. Uh, so on the first page here, you've got the kind of the most important page really, because it tells you what's happening with the CPU, what's happening with the GPU, the temperatures, the frequency, the voltage, the what it's, yeah, basically what everything's doing and the different profiles to switch between. 
And also down here, you've got the kind of different options for the aura, you've got different options for the display, you've got different options for the GPU, and you've also got different options for the audio. You can also see how much RAM you're using and also how much of the storage is taken up as well. So this pretty much on one page gives you everything. Uh, so the profiles on this laptop, you've got uh, several different ones to choose between. So you can go on the manual and actually change the fan speed and kind of the GPU you and everything individually um personally i would probably just go for the auto option because once you kind of start playing around with that on a laptop they are pretty fine tuned uh so once you start playing around with that you're probably gonna make it overheat and stuff uh but the profiles that it comes with i've currently got it on the silent profile which kind of restricts the performance but it also makes it much easier to live with uh, and it kind of you can tell like in a little graph it gives you an idea of what it's doing you've also got the performance profile which is kind of a balance between power saving and performance and noise so it's somewhere in the middle and then you've also got the turbo profile which is what i did all of my testing on so that kind of lets the components have free reign to get the most performance possible but also it does have to get a little bit noisier obviously uses a lot of power and stuff so that's the profile you probably want to use where you're when you're gaming basically or like doing anything strenuous and actually using the the performance that you've paid for uh so in general though i find it quite easy to switch between the profiles it's quite intuitive to use and things and it's very easy to kind of see what the laptop's doing you've also got a couple of other tabs down here as well so you've got the home tab You've got the device tab that tells you a little bit about what the laptop's doing and you can close things that are running in the background if you want to get a little bit more performance for gaming with. You've also got the kind of uh, aura profile. So this is where you will change the between the different lighting effects. So they call it Asus Aura Lighting. And you've got several different default ones to choose between. So breathing, strobing, color cycle, rainbow, blah, 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 blah. And you can change the speed of those. Or if you want a little bit more customization, you have to download the Aura Creator app. Uh, so that will give you the kind of per key RGB lighting and you can change up different profiles for different programs. But not everyone wants that. So you do have to get it separately, but it, the option is there if you want it. You've also down here got an option for the scenario profiles. So if you, for example, want to open a game, you can, the laptop will then automatically switch to that profile for that game. Uh, or if you open something like Photoshop, it will change the settings again, or open something like Premiere Pro, it will change the settings again, or like um, Blender, I don't know. Um, you can have like a different profile for whatever you're doing with your laptop. And you can actually change kind of what the display is doing, what the fans are doing, what the audio is doing, the GPU, the uh, lighting, the like, you can change everything about the laptop for a particular program, which I think is quite cool. And you can have a whole load of different profiles. They've got a feature tab, which kind of just gives you more stuff to fill your laptop with. Uh, and then you've also got highlights, which I'm pretty sure is just news. Yeah, so that's just like news about Asus user center, which is kind of like if you want to back up stuff. An inbox, which I've never had messages. I'm not sure what you would get through there, but you know. Uh, and then also there's a settings tab as well. So that gives you like different options um, for kind of like updating i think that's all it does and about the software yeah it doesn't really give you much but the main tab is the home tab and in general i think the asus uh rog armory crate software uh is a pretty good piece of software it's probably one of the better ones i've seen that come with the laptop and it does definitely do the job that it's meant to do and provide you lots of information at the same time so I am now finally going to move on to the performance that I saw from the Asus ROG GX502 laptop. When it comes to the kind of performance testing and things, I don't like to talk too much in the video. Uh, so if you head over to the KitGuru website, you can see all of the graphs and screenshots and the write-up and things in your own time and take a look at them in a little bit more detail. I will go over the general facts in the video, but I don't want to bore you all too much with loads and loads of information. So I started off by testing the SSD that's in this laptop so i found out that it was the intel 660p m.2 nvme drive that is definitely a more basic drive and as such the crystal disk mark results were pretty average really um for me this laptop cost a hell of a lot of money so you kind of expect maybe a better drive in such a high-end laptop it is definitely going to be better than your standard sata ssd or better than a hard drive uh but maybe it would have been nicer if asus put something a little bit better in it uh also it is quite 
quite small as well. So I've got a 512 gigabyte drive and it's already 70% full um, and I've only installed like my tester games and not much else really like if you're going to be using this laptop full time for kind of like uni work or like video editing or uh, photo editing and stuff and then also installing games on it that 500 gigabyte drive is going to fill up really really fast. Uh, they do also of course do a one terabyte version which gives you more space to manoeuvre uh, but the lack of kind of like having a hard drive does make me a little bit sad um, but you know it is a fast drive so the, the laptop and stuff does boot up really well uh, don't get me wrong like I'm not complaining that it is a it's nice to have an M.2 drive it just kind of is a bit small and not as good as I'd expect on such an expensive laptop one of my favorite tests I like to do on a gaming laptop is the battery life benchmark, uh, simply because I do find it quite interesting how much they can actually vary. Uh, with this laptop, I did my usual test of PC Mark uh, 8 with the home benchmark, and I did put it in a chart to kind of compare it against other laptops. And as you can see, it actually did surprisingly well. Uh, you have to remember this is a gaming laptop, so two and a half hours is actually quite impressive. Uh, and the reason I think it got such a good score is because it does have quite a lot of power saving features so I immediately noticed when I unplugged the charger that the brightness on the screen goes down uh, that it also drops down a profile as well so I was using it in the turbo mode and it immediately dropped down to the performance mode the fans also really slowed down as well and it kind of went into like a huddled kind of like power save mode um, which obviously does affect performance but you can't expect a gaming laptop to be able to game on the go with it if you went to go gaming on this laptop the performance would be rubbish and also you don't it would only last like 20 minutes but the fact that it can multitask for me is a really good feature i can see it working really well if you're like a uni student and you want something that you can game on in your halls like in the evening and stuff while it's plugged in and you can get the best performance and stuff and have basically a gaming pc but then also take that with you to your lectures and get two to three hours out of it while you're typing up notes and things so it is a really good kind of multitasking laptop um it's got the like nvidia optimus as well which obviously helps and i think asus have definitely kind of found the balance and the fact that it doesn't have a hard drive as well which is a negative when it comes to storage does mean you do have a slightly bigger 76 watt hour battery which is um actually quite a bit bigger than what I've seen on some laptops like if, if you find a laptop that has a hard drive often it does have quite a bit of a smaller battery uh, so yeah battery life I was actually really impressed on this little laptop so so far everything is going really well for this laptop I think it does have a really lot of good features and things but unfortunately there is one problem it has uh, that really disappointed me because everything else about it I think is really quite good and that is the kind of like cooling and temperature performance uh, this laptop just really fooled down it does have a lot of technology behind it so like on the Asus website they go on about the like anti-dust fans and the new kind of like heat pipes and like the how many fan blades and stuff that it has and it does have the kind of like fancy flap so like when you open the lid the bottom kind of like raises off the surface to give you more airflow but it just didn't do very well it gets hot and loud and I don't mind a laptop being louder if it stays cool but this laptop kind of has both it's like not very quiet and it's also hot as well so it just doesn't really tick any boxes uh when it was on the turbo profile it's basically noisy all the time so even if you're not really using it you're kind of getting like around 50 decibels anyway uh, even when you just left it there on the side if it's in turbo um, and then of course when you do put it under load in the turbo profile it gets even louder and you get like closer to 60 decibels which without a headset on is just awful so anyone that's going to be sat around you is going to hate you <laughs> um, in the silent profile it is a lot better uh, so for example it like is pretty quiet but it doesn't ever go completely silent and that's even while it's idle so some laptops I have taken a look at they do restrict the performance quite a lot in the silent profile but the fans do practically turn off whereas this laptop even in the silent profile it does have audible fan noise uh, and just to top that off as well the temperatures aren't very good either when this laptop was idle I saw the idle temperatures were a little bit warmer than average uh, and unfortunately that did translate to the under load temperatures as well so the way that the i7 9750H works is that it kind of requires good cooling in order to boost high and get the best performance and um, that's kind of the same as the 8750H uh, and 
With this laptop, it doesn't really have the good cooling performance in order to get the most out of that CPU. Uh, and I mean, you're paying for that high-end CPU, you're paying for the high-end GPU, so you want them to be cool enough that they're going to boost high enough so you're going to get the performance that you paid for. And unfortunately in this laptop I saw the CPU reach a high of 95 degrees, which is really hot. It just shows that it's just not going to be able to boost high. And at one point I even saw it throttle, so it went below that 2.6 gigahertz threshold, uh, which is kind of below the base clock speed. Uh, so it just, you're not going to get the best performance because the CPU is just getting too hot in this laptop. Fortunately, the RTX 2070 does do a lot better. It is slightly hotter than some other laptops, but the 71 degrees maximum is like safe and it did reach a really good boost clock speed. Um, so the GPU does a lot better, but the CPU just, for me, it does definitely get too hot. And the fact that it affects performance is definitely a downside as well. Also with the overall cooling, I found that the chassis did get really hot also. So in a laptop, I think it's very acceptable for it to get hot around the vents because there's a lot of hot air coming out of there. The material that it's made of is bound to get hot. But there was also a lot of other hot spots on this laptop as well. So kind of next to the touchpad where you rest your wrist on the left hand side uh, that area actually got really kind of like quite hot so that's obviously quite uncomfortable the actual whole kind of keyboard across the middle does heat up as well um, and it wasn't burning hot but it kind of is the heat that you know when you kind of grab like a hot mug of tea and it, it doesn't burn but it does feel hot and you feel like you're kind of hanging on to like a hand warmer or something which is quite pleasant in the winter but in the summer it's not what you want and I kind of got that kind of like horrible sticky kind of clammy feeling and I just found this laptop after a while quite uncomfortable to use and I wasn't really particularly pushing it either it just happens like when you have it in the turbo profile the components just get too hot because the laptop can't really handle it I guess um, and the amount of technology and things behind it I did definitely expect it to perform a little bit better um, but I guess the problem is with like when you get a thin gaming laptop and you put such powerful components in it you're gonna have problems with thermals and cooling and the GX502 definitely doesn't do either of those very well. I mentioned at the start of the video that the i7-9750H is very similar to the 8750H and Cinebench is really where I got to see that it's ex pretty much exactly the same CPU. Uh, once again it is technically a better CPU on paper and that it can boost higher but that's all down to kind of the thermal performance and the cooling performance that allows it to boost higher. So in this particular laptop it kind of scored about average. The Cinebench score was just in the middle of all the other 8750H laptops Kicker have tested. Um, so if you're someone that maybe has a laptop already that has an 8750H you're gonna get like zero advantage upgrading to the 9750H. If you're looking at buying a new gaming laptop though um, the 9750H does seem to be a pretty good processor it obviously gets a really good score um it's kind of like close to like a desktop processor um so you're not going to have any problems if you want to like video edit or like render stuff out on this laptop um but uh compared to its predecessor it's pretty much the same cpu the 3D Mark results that I saw from this laptop in general were pretty impressive. Uh, as you can see, the physics scores, which is basically the kind of CPU uh, part of the benchmark, were a little bit lower, and we know that that's down to kind of like the cooling restraints from this laptop. However, because it does have that RTX 2070 that cooled really nicely, it can boost really high, and therefore it kind of like allowed the GX502 to climb up the ranks, and it was only really beaten out by the Aorus uh, 15X9 laptop that I reviewed not too long ago. In the port rail benchmark it also did extremely well so that's the one that kind of tests the ray tracing performance uh, this laptop because that RTX 2070 once again boosts nice and high it could get a really good score and I was actually just surprised to see that it got really close to an RTX 2080 max Q equipped laptop to test the gaming performance in this laptop, I tried out Rise of the Tomb Raider, Tom Clancy's Ghost Recon Wildlands, and also Far Cry 5. There are three tester games that I've got loads of data on, so it made it quite easy to compare this laptop to other laptops. And as you can see, it did get some really good results. All the games are tested on like the highest settings with the AA disabled, uh, and this laptop handled them easily. I mean, it's probably much too powerful to be playing games like that. Um, but it does mean that it makes, takes full advantage of the 140 
144 hertz display um, because like it's getting well above 60 fps in all of those games on the highest settings if you're someone that maybe wants to play like less demanding games something like csgo um, then it might even be worth looking at getting the 240 hertz display uh, for like an even smoother gameplay experience because the rtx 2070 is going to make mincemeat of it so overall, what do I think of the Asus ROG Zephyrus GX502 gaming laptop? It does come with a very premium price tag and as such it has a extremely nice uh, kind of overall build quality and a very high kind of level of aesthetics and things as well. It's a great looking laptop and it's great to kind of feel and pick up and touch etc. Uh, it also has a extremely good display. Uh, I really like the display. It ticks so many boxes. It also has a great keyboard and a great touchpad. So in general, that makes it a really nice laptop to kind of work on or game on. Uh, also, it does have a good battery life as well. So with gaming laptops we often see that the battery life suffers um, but with this laptop because you are kind of sacrificing the storage you do get a larger battery which makes it a lot more of a multitasker it's a gaming laptop but you can also kind of use it on the go a little bit as well the thing that really disappoints me with this laptop is definitely the cooling and thermals though um, I think if the cooling on this laptop was better I would just love it but unfortunately for me on a laptop that's two things that are really really very important um, with this laptop, when it comes to kind of like the temperatures, it just can't keep the CPU cool. If you're someone that's going to be exclusively gaming, you not, might not find that's really a problem because you're not going to be ragging it as much as I did during the testing. Uh, however, for me, if you're someone that's doing CPU intensive tasks, if you want to do like video editing, if you want to like play games that use uh, more of the CPU, like uh, it's going to heat up, it's going to get too hot and therefore the performance is going to suffer and that is definitely disappointing. And also the chassis gets hot as well. Um, but if you can kind of maybe put up with that i think it has a hell of a lot going for it um but once again it is definitely an expensive laptop if you like this video from kit guru make sure to give it a thumbs up if you'd like to see more from kit guru please make sure to hit that subscribe button we also have a little bell icon you can press which will give you a notification every time a new video goes live we love to hear from our readers so please make sure to leave a comment as well <laughs>